Geologic History of Earth The Earth was formed at the same time as all the other planets in our solar system, around 4.6 billion years ago. We know this based on evidence from radioactive decay rates uh, of moon rocks and meteorites. The story of our solar system goes to something like this. A cloud of gas and dust, probably left over from a supernova or the death of a large star, began to collapse on itself. The result was a flat spinning disk of dust and gas held together by gravity. Nuclear fusion begins. It fuses hydrogen into helium. At this point, the sun was a protostar, and it was able to gobble up about 99% of all the material present. The material that left, was left behind by the sun was clumped together into bigger and bigger pieces. These clumps became planets, they became dwarf planets, asteroids, comets, and moons. Only rocky things could survive close to the sun, so gaseous and icy material got pushed further out. Uh, and that's pretty much how our solar system formed. And that includes our Earth. So the early Earth was very different than it is today. No rocks exist on Earth today that are older than three and a half billion years. So it's difficult for scientists to accurately describe what Earth must have looked like. We do know that Earth heated up and largely melted due to heat from the impact events, but also from uh, radioactive decay, which was going on inside the Earth. So during this time, the Earth separated into different layers based on density. After hundreds of millions of years, a solid crust solidified and formed, and plate tectonics started. Evidence of a solid crust dates back about 4.2 billion years ago, and uh, conditions were still pretty harsh. Uh, Earth was not stable for life yet, and uh, get gases from inside the Earth seeped out, uh, out of the crust, through cracks, or even through volcanic eruptions. We call this process outgassing, and it's an important process because this is what created our first atmosphere. Earth's first atmosphere was composed of hydrogen and helium because those were the two most abundant gases in the universe. Earth's second atmosphere was the result of outgassing from volcanic eruptions. Um, as volcanic eruptions took place, uh, water vapor, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen all got released into the atmosphere. Scientists actually study volcanic eruptions today to learn more about how uh, it, they had a hand in forming Earth's second atmosphere. Um, so really, we can learn a lot. This is that same process from geologic sequencing from the law of uniformitarianism that anything that happens today probably happened the same way in the past. Now, the one gas that's missing from our early atmosphere was oxygen. Oxygen was not present. Um, early single-celled life forms, probably about three and a half billion years ago, were using carbon dioxide because that was plentiful uh, on the planet. And that process of using carbon dioxide uh, didn't involve oxygen. Then, some organisms evolved to do photosynthesis, and that's the process of taking carbon dioxide and, in the, and turning some of it into oxygen. The rocks uh, eventually on Earth started to react with the oxygen. It filled up the oceans, and then eventually it filled up the atmosphere. And today, about 21% of the atmosphere is composed of oxygen. Without it, as we know, living things would not be able to survive. So to better understand uh, the history of Earth, but also history of New York State, we have these two pages in our reference table, pages eight and nine. This is a centerfold, meaning you have to lay them down next to each other in order to read them correctly. You should always uh, make sure that they line up from left to right. And uh, there's a lot of information here. So let's, uh, let's take a look at what we're given. So running across the top on page eight, there are the four time spans used to keep track of time from Eric eon to era to period to epoch then there's life on earth history of bedrock and then on page nine distribution of fossils important geologic events in new york 
and the inferred position of Earth's continents, their land masses. All right, so let's start on page eight. Over on page eight, we have our time scale. Time is broken down into millions of years, so let's start with zero. That would be now. And it goes all the way down to 4,600. 4,600, this is in millions of years. So 4,600 is 4.6 billion years. That makes sense. I know it seems weird to write it that way, but that's, that's what it means. Uh, in addition to years, we're given events. So if I start at the bottom, uh, 4.6 billion years ago, right? We'll talk about it that way. That's the estimated time and origin of the solar system and Earth. Then 4.2 billion years ago, oldest known rocks. 3.7 billion years ago, biological carbon, 3.4, stromatolites, uh, 2.5, oxygen is produced by cyanobacteria and starts to bind with uh, iron. Uh, after that, um, about 2.1 billion years ago, oxygen enters the ocean and begins to fill up the atmosphere. And then somewhere around, I don't know, 1.2 billion years ago, the first sexually reproducing organisms uh, have evolved. So, that's some of the events that have taken place according to the time scale that we're given. Now, everything that we talk about today is really based on the fossil record. Uh, from that, we divide geologic time into eons, eras, periods, and epochs. They're not exact units of time. I can't say, okay, it's, uh, an, er an eon is this, this many million years, or an era is this many thousands of years. They're not like hours and minutes, but instead they're divided based on events that took place on Earth. Let's take a look at the divisions of time on page 8. We will start with the eon. Eon is the biggest unit of time, and the Precambrian, which is divided into the Archaean and the Proterozoic, make up 88% of all geologic time on Earth. So... Um, it contains a lot of history, but unfortunately, Precambrian fossils are rare and difficult to find because any organisms that lived during this time uh, were small, and they had no solid body parts, no hard parts, so they didn't impress or imprint themselves in rocks, and when they died, their shells, for example, didn't drift to the bottom and get cemented. Uh, in addition, any rocks that were around at that time, uh, or might have contained fossils, have already been eroded, buried, uh, uh, converted to magma, or metamorphosized to no longer show the evidence that we need. So very hard to see what that time period was like. The um, individual parts of the uh, Archaean and the Proterozoic are divided into eras. That's the next division of time, smaller than any of the early, middle, and late, and early, middle, and late. So further subdivision. The other eon is called the Phanerozoic, and the Phanerozoic covers the last 500 million years. And in those 500 million years, a lot's happened. So this eon is, well, is represented in this table. Uh, that's really what we're looking at, is the Phanerozoic. It makes up most of the information. So while 88% of the history on of Earth is here, this table is dealing with the last 500 million years. If you follow this thick black line, it kind of divides the table. Everything you see from left to right happened in this little window in the Phanerozoic. So that's what this table is really meant to show you. It expands the eras, the periods, the epochs of the Phanerozoic. So within the Phanerozoic, uh, eon, there are three eras. Those are the Paleozoic, the Mesozoic, and the Cenozoic. And within those individual eras, there are a series of different periods. I'm not going to read them all because there's a lot of them, but they divide those eras. After the periods, we get into divisions of epochs. So the epochs are divisions of the periods. The periods are divisions of the eras. The era is divisions of eons. See how this goes? And then we have life on Earth. This is the story of how life changed over time in the last 500 million years on Earth. 
it actually extends past 500 million years because if you look down on the very bottom where it says abundant stromatolites, I don't know if you can read that here, but you could certainly see that in your own reference table. So right around uh, this area, it says abundant stromatolites. That happened about 1.3 billion years ago. So it's giving you a little bit of the uh, late Precambrian time period. But the rest of the table, Right? This is all information that shows the last 500 million years, important, important events that happen and how they tie to what's on the right, like what was going on in New York State, what was going on with Pangaea and how continents were separating. So all together, it's a look at how life has changed on Earth. All right, so the history of life on Earth, it's, it's an important story. Let's... Uh, Let's go back to this diagram. Um, so throughout Earth's history, living things have adapted to changes on Earth's surface, and they've evolved. That's an important word. Evolution occurs when an organism has specific traits that help them survive, and those traits are passed on to its offspring. The more the organisms survive, the more those traits appear in future organisms. If an organism or group of organisms doesn't have the traits needed to survive, they die or they go extinct. We call that evolution. That's an important process because that's how life has gone from being uh, very simple to being very complex. Going from single cell in the beginning to multicellular. That's kind of the push of evolution is to become more and more comp complicated. So all of our evidence of this comes only from the fossil record, or, or at least it always did until we discovered DNA. And using the fossil record, we can see a gradual transition from, as I said, many simple organisms to much more complex organisms. When we talk about life on Earth, it's always important to remember that as the Earth changed, life on Earth had to change too. Adaptation means being able to survive when the environment changes. And the Earth, for example, Pangaea separating, volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, collisions with, with large objects like meteorites and asteroids change the environment. Organisms that could survive, they did. Organisms that couldn't, they went extinct. And as life evolved, these successful genes got passed forward so that they were found in the offspring, and that's how evolution takes place. So, so the story of life on Earth is really tied to how Earth changed over time. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.